What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel that is everything military simulator, tax shooter, and historic gaming. Today is the day a lot of you have been waiting for. Sprocket Tank Design has finally released. For those of you that are new around here, do know that we try to give away a Steam key once every week. Now don't bother entering if you're not going to plan on viewing my pathetic little videos because I just randomly announce a winner sometime towards the end of each week. And for all you people raging at me on forums and stuff, the reason the keys last so long is because uh, more than half of them don't get claimed. Anyway, if you want to enter the giveaway, we're giving away Postscriptum Beyond the Wire, and now we got Sprocket Keys to give. If you want to enter the giveaway, just wait on later, stay tuned, and I'll give you directions on exactly how to enter. For now, we're going to jump right into this video. I'm going to be completely honest, this isn't exactly my first tank or my first run, but it is my second. All of this may look rather confusing, but it's actually rather intuitive. You literally just set every parameter without putting it into the red, and it'll work. Now this game does has multiplayer planned for the future. There's a sandbox mode in it right now. And basically, the gameplay loop right now is there's several scenarios, each scenario requiring a rather different build from the last. Which, believe it or not, makes for quite the challenge. If this wasn't on your radar and completely new to you, it just released on Steam for 20 US dollars. And to cut to the chase, if you're a tank enthusiast like I am, I definitely recommend it. It's super early access, it's super early in development, but the potential is endless. Alright, let's get into it. So I want to replay this part so you can see exactly what's going on. This is the first menu with a list of scenarios all providing a different challenge from the next. Of course, this is the first scenario No Man's Land, which is a World War I battlefield with artillery and AT guns shooting at each other. And from what I've gathered from my first run, I have to build somewhat of a mobile tank that can get from one end of the map to the other. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So right off the jump, do know that this is a very challenging game and not for the faint of heart. So go ahead and grab onto the whoa shit bar as I'm gonna crank the video speed up just a little bit as I try to talk you over exactly what I'm thinking with this design. Now right off the jump, I want something small, light, and mobile as can be. And being that there's trenches and all kind of puddles and crap in the way out there, I definitely need this baby to traverse some awkward terrain. I'm not super worried about armor thickness and I'm not super worried about firepower. My thinking with the design is get from one end of the map to the other as fast and cheeky as I possibly can. You'll find out real quick why the single developer decided to name it Sprocket as as far as the design goes when it comes to the tracks or the driving feature the Sprocket the freaking parameters and possibilities and different designs you can do with just the tracks alone are freaking endless. I'm at four times speed here and I'm just messing with literally everything. And basically what I'm trying to pull off is kind of a relatively small amount of track, yet still have a strong angle on it so I can get over trenches and puddles. I don't want it to be too small, but like I said, I want to keep the weight as light as possible. Now this next part here, the suspension, I really don't have a clue what I'm doing as nothing visually happens as you change these things. Although you can see the torque and like max speed and stuff like that change. I'm gonna have a sprocket section up in the discord so if you're like a tank engineer or something do come through and fill us in please also you can drop what you know down in the comments now moving on we're moving on to the actual hull and the armor shape and what this tank is actually gonna look like literally every piece and every angle of these tanks is manipulatable is that a word Manip manipulatable Anyway, you can manipulate literally everything. You can manipulate this thing into anything. It's like a piece of clay. Now, like I said, this is literally my second time trying, so I'm no pro. I just want to show you guys this awesome one developer game as supporting indie titles is what this channel is really all about. And, of course, the historic enthusiasm. Like I said in the beginning, it's all about mill sims, tax shooters, and historic gaming, baby. Real quick, what I'm trying to go for here is a lot of slant as to bounce off rounds the best I can. As, like I said before, I'm going for lightweight. We're going to keep the armor as thin as possible. So the shape of the tank is super important. Think of like a uh, stealth plane, if you will. 
We want to keep everything kind of rounded and slanted as possible. So that when those enemy AT guys start chucking AP rounds at us, they'll just kind of bounce off, right? Oh, well, that's the thinking. Moving on to the construction of the turret. Same exact thinking here. I want to keep it streamlined and like stealthy and sexy as possible. As you can see up in the top right, there is the shape and then the armor. So once you set up your shape, you move over to the armor and you can set the literal thickness by millimeter for every single plate on the turret and hull. And like I said, we're going super light, so keeping everything angled is the idea here. Now this is where it gets tricky. Mounting your gun, I literally go through every single one because I was just curious. However, I knew I was going to end up with a light gun. If memory serves correct, I set it to about 30 millimeters. I extend the length just a bit and concave just the tip of it. Why? I don't know. I thought it looked cool. Now this part I'm still coming to grasp with as far as like the crew goes. I don't know exactly how it works. I know you have to have a driver viewport. You have to have a gunner viewport. You have to get have a commander capula, which is how he gets in and out of it. And you have to have a loader. You can position him in the hall or the turret. And you can position any of these guys in the hall or turret. But every action has a reaction. Like say you put the loader in the hall. It's going to take him a longer time to load the shells that have to actually be loaded in the turret. So you'll go from like a 2 second reload speed to like a 5 second reload speed. Put your viewport like too close to the gun or something like that. And you won't be able to see to the right. You really got to think when you start designing these things. Here you'll see I start putting my viewports in. Once I place the viewport, you'll see like this green globe. Now I may be wrong, but I would imagine that is like the actual person within the tank. That is his spot. That's where the gunner is. That's where the driver is. And the commander and loader fit within the hull or the turret also. Now I'm just placing these things that seem more or less like uh, knickknacks or decorations. Now I would imagine these uh, big old logs could actually deflect rounds. Kind of like they were talking about in the new postscriptum armor overhaul. If you guys have yet to see that, Postscriptum is going to be owning the tank gameplay world here soon. Like, say you go to put a mine on a tank, and the log's there, it won't stick to the log because it's wood. Now, you can literally blow it off with an AT round, or like another tank, blow that log off, but hey, the log actually, you know, took an impact. If you guys have yet to see that, definitely look a few videos back. I do a couple videos on uh, Postscriptum's new armor overhaul. Super excited about that. Anyway, so now I'm just messing with everything, trying to get it roadworthy. And off to my first test. I don't know what it is. I think my big fat belly out in front is preventing me from traversing the most pathetic little puddles. So we go back to the drawing board. That's another thing that's super cool about this game. You just press the space bar and you can instantly test whatever you have ready. Run into some trouble, press the space bar again, and you're back to the design board. Anyway, long story short, I finally figure it out. I raise the hull up all together a little bit higher. I go ahead and I extend my tracks so that I really have the, the front of the tracks out in front of me to where they can, you know, traverse these puddles and these trenches and everything that's getting in my way. And right when I think I'm off to the races, I realize I've forgotten one extremely important part. You gotta set your fuel up. And more importantly, your exhaust. So I went ahead and set up two different pairs of exhaust pipes and figured that should be plenty. And for some reason, I don't know if the vents were required, but they looked hideous on my tank. I went ahead and placed them anyway. There's two different types of vents. I don't know if they're necessary. I know the exhaust is necessary, but I just went ahead and placed these vents anyway because they were there. And let's get on the way. Here we are in Verdun. Or Passchendaele, World War One, and freaking what I like to call <laughs> Mark Zero. <laughs> All right, boys, we received orders from command. They have us crossing no man's land. Zero one hundred hours. Strap in tight, cause it's gonna be an all-night slobber. With our artillery firing on them, there'll be mincemeat by the time we get there. Forward, boys, forward!
keep this spacing, boys. Don't slow down forward. Driver, hold. You can see their artillery firing. Where is it? Damn it, we just took a shot to the front. Keep her steady, boys. Keep her face in front. Trying to get a visual. It's a hit, Gunner. It's a hit. Good shot, Gunner. We had Mark on the right flank go down. We gotta keep moving, boys. This artillery is gonna get rained in on us. Calm down, gunner. Save some rounds. Save some rounds for the rest of them. Go oh, the horror. There's Mark over there, all toasty. Forward, boys, for Mark. Jeez, we just lost another one. Hold on, breaking immersion. Uh, are these levels procedurally generated? Because the last time I got here, there was definitely two of these planks. <laughs> uh oh, this is not gonna work. Damn it, driver! Reverse! Reverse! We gotta go around! Full throttle! <laughs> so that's her, boys. Sprocket. Check it out on Steam. $20. 20 US dollars. It's one independent developer, support indie devs. It's super early in development, so what you see here is only going to get substantially better. The next Sprocket video I do will cover the roadmap and everything else he's got lined up. Super cool dev. Like I said, he's given us some promo keys to give away. If you're interested in the giveaway, we're giving away Beyond the Wire, Postscriptum, and Sprocket game keys. All you gotta do is like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join us over on Discord, it's linked in the bio, Boogie 5 Gaming Etc. Discord channel. Come say hi, don't be shy. But most importantly, drop a comment, say whatever you want. If you're already playing Sprocket, give us some tips. But most importantly, leave your Discord name and number. That's gonna work as your giveaway entry ticket stub. I wanna give a special shout out to my Millsimp minions. We got three different tiers to support the channel, Mil Simp, Mil Simper, and Mil Simpist. You get exclusive content, but more importantly, you get double the entries for each week's Steam Key giveaway. So if you want to leg up in these giveaways, as little as 99 cent can give you a big advantage. And you're supporting yours truly at the same time. Don't forget about Easy Company. If you're looking for a realism unit that runs these Mil Sim games, check out Easy. Postscriptum, Hell at Loose, Squad, they do it all. And most important, if you're looking to start your own game server, look no other than G Portal. In fact, if you mention Easy Company, they'll give you 5% off on any of these game servers. Minecraft, Arma, Postscriptum, shoot, Sprocket, when multiplayer gets available, I'm sure they'll host Sprocket servers if you want, that's what you want. G Portal for all your server hosting needs. All right, boyos, I love each and every one of you. I'll see you in the next one. Y'all be good to each other.